it's time to redefine the basic skills. What are the basic skills? And the basic skills go way beyond reading and math and writing. Um, there's so much of a need in the workplace for interpersonal skills and teaming skills. There's all the digital literacy skills. So the basic skills as represented through adult education are far broader than they have been defined previously. Everybody's got to go to college. Everybody's going to be a college graduate. Well, they're not, you know, and so we can train people and give them the basic skills, the soft skills they need to go out and work. That's what adult ed can do. It's helping those who need to get their high school equivalency. It's helping those who um, need to, uh, just a basic skill, numeracy perhaps, or you know, uh, basic reading skills. It's, again, helping those who need to get their citizenship. It's helping those who need to learn the language, so because they've come from another country and they've settled here and they're trying to increase their language skill set so that they can understand English and move forward in, in American society. Communities are only as strong as their weakest link. And undereducated adults, educationally deprived adults, that leads right into poverty, becomes that weakest link. And we are the vehicle that can pull those people up and, and, and help them to prioritize education so that they can become self-sufficient, so that they can become good parents to their children. We do a little of everything, you know, education and, and the academic piece is our primary piece, but um, it's so much more than that. It's we have to really look at the student as a whole. We have to help them overcome their barriers, uh, barriers of transportation or childcare. We have to work with other agencies. Um, we have to help them determine goals. They've in many cases never even considered a goal or a long-term goal. It's okay always, again, with that math thing to say, we joke about it, oh, algebra, geometry, I have no idea. But you never hear someone joke about, I don't know how to read or write. Um, it's a stigma that I don't know if it will ever go away, but hopefully, prayerfully, as adult educators, we're letting them know it's okay to say, I don't know, and that there are the facilities, the um, abilities, the locations, the, the, the groups, the advocacy organizations like ours that are in place to help. In adult education now, we're, we're having to help families realize that they can do it, realize that they can see the American dream. Uh, it's for every family out there. Um, we just have to show them the tools, give them the tools, help them acquire what they need, that self-confidence, um, that, that little bit of boost that it takes to, to get that education, to get that credential so they can go and be um, self-sufficient adults and have thriving families and eventually have thriving communities. It's more than education. It's more than that. It's more than me than me putting you in a classroom or you working with an instructor. It's 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 you can see these people just blossom like a flower. It's 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 incredible. Really, it is, and it's it's such a blessing, and uh, I think it's a calling. That's what I tell my people. It's a calling. I know I can't pay you like you would make in public school, but it's a calling, and and, and it it's just I think, from my philosophy, is if we can make these people feel better and we can make them successful, we've done our job. If I can touch one person and I can improve their lives, then I feel like I did my job. I had somebody that touched me and improved my life, so now I feel like I can give back.
These teachers are extraordinary. Many of them have been in adult education for many years. They're very committed, they're very passionate about it. They see the difference it's making in the lives of the students that come through their doors. It's an entire network, and I think that that's one reason it's so rewarding, because it's not just about an individual. It's about a whole family unit. It's about a community. It's about a city, a state, and then finally our nation. So um, it, we have a big, huge impact, and so do our students. If the adults don't have the education and they don't feel the importance of education, then that goes right down to their children. And yes, some children are strong enough, have fortunate situations where they have the support that they need to go on and, and break that cycle, but the majority of the people don't break that cycle and it just, it just continues around. So it's, it's a hidden problem. And there's people out there, believe it or not, in this country that cannot read and write, and they do not even have skills to write a sentence, to communicate, don't have any computer skills. In this day and age, that's very difficult for a lot of people to realize. People do deserve a second chance. I'm sorry, you know, some people say to me, well, they, we, we already paid for them. We already put money in, you know, to sending them to school and they didn't, you know, they dropped out. I said, well, no, we failed them. We really failed them. Can you imagine picking up your newspaper in the morning and not understanding, you know, What's, what you're reading, um, driving down the road and looking at a street sign, going to the bus station and not being able to read the bus schedule, picking up a menu and ordering what the person you're with orders simply because, because you, you don't see what your options are. It takes a lot of grit to walk in the door and say, I want to get my GED when you're 50 something years old. Just imagine that. If you can't read at 50, think about that. Think about what you read every day. I had a gentleman come in and he was my age, which is too old. But anyway, um, he wanted to learn to read because he was getting ready to have a new baby at his age and wanted to read the Bible to his baby. I remember the day he came in and he was so excited because he knew what a stop sign said now. That's what we work for. We don't work for the money, we work because we care and we give people hope. In fact, I was told that one time. I said, why are you here? Because you give me hope. And that is, that makes it worth it. When a student comes in and they don't have enough to eat, we need to be able to connect them to the local food pantry. If a student doesn't have a ride to, to, to the class, then we need to be make him aware that the Metro has a discount program for students. How do they get those discount cards? So any, even, I would say, you know, in life, for me and you, if, we, if somebody gave us $200 more a month, that would be a huge impact in our lives. For them, $10, $20 a week, it's a great deal. And so if they're able to save money on a Metro card or on a, uh, providing lunch on their uh, food for their kids, they're able to not spend those $30, $40 on that and they're able to spend it on their education and be able to improve themselves. Because the reason why they're not going to school is because most of them are having two and three jobs, you know, in order for them to provide their, to their families. So we need to find resources for them to maybe work one, perhaps two jobs and then go to school. So that way they can, they can get a better job.
we talk about something called self-efficacy, the, the belief in yourself, that people have to develop that belief in themselves that they have the opportunity to succeed, and adult education is one of the paths that helps open that door for so many. We already failed a lot of these parents once in the educational system. So we need to uh, help them now and be able to put them into uh, certification programs. Our students come to us with many, many different issues. And it may not just be uh, that they need childcare, or they, they need housing, or they need transportation. It may, it may be other factors. They have learning difficulties. And that may be one of the reasons why they, they, were not in, they didn't stay in school after all. Adult education, I guess, needs more funding to be able to assist with these uh, different needs. When people are not working or they're lacking skills to get better jobs, then what happens is that they end up in poverty level conditions. And that in turn into welfare, into raising kids that end up dropping out of school because they need to help their parents meet rent and all that. So we need to start educating them. I think it's also really, really important that we have support just from family members. I th one of the things is if a husband or a wife or a parent says, you can do this and we're 100 percent behind you we'll watch the kids so you can go to that class um, we'll make sure that you get there i have a a, a, par a parent actually in class that just finished and every member of her church brought her to class every day someone different brought her for six weeks to make sure that she was learning english as another language so when we have people who love us and support us to say, this is not a joke, it's just as serious. Okay, maybe you didn't get your high school diploma, but you want to do it now at 45. I'm here to support you just like if you were four or five. It amazes me every day the, um, that you have people that are working such physical jobs and have families and all the same responsibilities as the rest of us, but then go to class in the morning or at night or on the weekend because they want to learn English so they can get more skills, so they can open businesses, so they can move up to supervisory positions, so they can get the job that gets them the money because they want a home ownership. It's the American dream for non-Americans coming to our country. It's about esteem and resiliency and um, pride and so if you have all of those things that just flows over and becomes an entire fabric in a community in a neighborhood um, in a city or a state so if i feel good about myself and i've earned learned skills even career pathway skills i can now work something with my hands or my brain or my nose or my eyes and then i'm able to share that with someone else now I'm a property owner. Maybe I get my first car. I'm making sure that my street is clean and that my yards are, are kept up. So it just, again, it just keeps trickling down and transferring over and, and um, it becomes a joy, a passion. We certainly need money. We need to be able to help our adult ed instructors be professionalized. You know, so many are, you'll hear of them being part-time, not getting benefits. And you can't sustain life and have a family when you're constantly struggling. You know, it's, it's a, some of the similar, on a different level, but some of the diff similar problems that the adult learners have. They, they need, the adult educators need the support, need the training, need the benefits, need the pay in order to provide the services that are needed.
you need to come and see it. Um, I think that, you know, it's one thing for me to be passionate about it and talk about what's going on, but for you to really talk to and see the students and hear the story from them is a whole other story because when you hear their stories of life-changing impacts that they've had these, these um, courses and these classes and what we have to offer has for them. I mean, it's, it's changed complete lives. We could start to professionalize the field. We could start to provide services to more adults because there's so many out there that, that need assistance that aren't aware of it or don't have access to it or on a waiting list. We could have more adult education centers, better support the teachers that are there, provide more resources, better resources for the teachers that are there, and meet the needs of so many that, ha that have the need to increase literacy skills. I think it would allow us to, first of all, really spend some time recognizing what works the best. And I think best practices would rise to the surface. Uh, and there's two, now I'll also mention three challenges. One challenge is accessibility to programs. I think you'd have programs at different times, different times of day, more technology being used, more online learning. So there's that kind of level. Uh, another level is it would allow us to actually have decent jobs for the staff. And this is a major issue. 90% um, of the staff are fragmented part-time workers. It is so critically important to have a solid core of full-time staff that are devoted to these programs in some way, shape, or form. And I think if we had additional funds, we could totally increase training and professional development time um, to develop the expertise of the practitioners. We need dollars to come in to help us serve the families that we're serving. Um, we need educators that are, uh, have an expertise, have a passion. They need to be rewarded for what they do. Um, it needs to be treated in the field of education. Adult educators need to feel like they are level with K-12 or higher ed educators. If we don't get involved, what will happen? I mean, how will they get their citizenship? How will they pass that? How will they get the tools they need for another job? And how would they be able to help their children and be able to read to their children at night and help them with their homework? How would they be able to break the poverty cycle? I mean, so we as a community can either give them the tools to hand up and out of those situations, or we can stand by and, and do nothing.